you be going for Matthias Todd. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Y'all hanging in there? We're going on for an hour. Cool, cool. What's up? My name is Matthias Todd Johnson. Uh, yeah, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio originally, man. And we got Ohio in the house? Y'all just like the Midwest. All right, that's cool. That's cool, man. Yeah, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I moved out here like 10 years ago to pursue a career in acting. And um, I'm like, where else to go but L.A.? And I remember getting off that flight, finally hitting Hollywood Boulevard and looking around like, wow. This place is ghetto as fuck. Like, shit, bro. Like, you got homeless people everywhere. You got roaches. My friend's like, hey, bro, you gotta be careful. There's crips and bloods out there. I'm like, I'm more scared of the roaches at this point. Like, it's fucking crazy. And when I first moved out here, too, I had a friend who had just turned 21 back in Cleveland. And um, I had asked, could I buy his ID? Because I was 18. So I bought his ID, and I want to tell you how racist L.A. is, because they accepted his ID everywhere of someone I looked at nothing alike. <laughs> like, I got in everywhere. I already got caught twice, and that was by two black security guards, so that tells you something, man. Boy, boy, man. Uh, also, when I moved out here, uh, I, what else? We, shit, rent, I, I learned bad, easy, how, like, the, the rent is so expensive. Like, back home, I was paying... You, my mom's paying like 1100 for a three bedroom house back home and out here 1100 get you a couch. It's not <laughs> the fucking same at all, man. And roommates, roommates, you get the luck of the draw with that shit too. My last roommate, no lie, he was a black anarchist. And at the time, I didn't even know what an anarchist was and it's basically someone who's against the concept of uh, household chores. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> I used to be like, hey man, you doing the dishes tonight? He'd be like, what? The dishes? That concept created by the white man to keep us all down? <laughs> all right, fuck. You right, boss, you got that one. But yeah, man, uh, also when I moved out here, I got directly into a relationship like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> I was from, we dated from like 18 to 22, my prime whole years. And uh, she robbed me of that, man. Uh, she ended up cheating on me. And you know, for men, we, we can't really take the cheating shit as well as women do. Cause you guys get, you guys get your girls, talk shit about the deal, have wine. Man, it's like our heart drops to our nutsack. Like, yeah. we can't have, we need like a life alert for men is what I'm saying. Like, when that shit goes down, bro, it's falling and can't get up, man. It's just fucking wild, bro. Uh, <laughs> but after her, I decided to uh, like take some time to find myself and I unintentionally threw myself into a three year dry spell. <laughs> and if you've ever been in a three-year dry spell before, you're going to lower your morals at some point. <laughs> so I signed up for OnlyFans. Uh, as a consumer, don't get excited, guys. Uh, so I signed up for OnlyFans because it was this girl like I wanted to talk to, and I got her Instagram, as us millennials do. And I got her Instagram, and immediately her OnlyFans page came up in my suggested followers, and all she did was spell her name backwards. And... I'm like, you gotta be slicker than that now. Subscribe. Uh, <laughs> so I subscribed and you know, it was only three bucks to subscribe. And I'm like, okay, what a deal, man. And, but she only had like 10 followers. And I'm like, wow, this bitch just sold her soul for 30 bucks. Like, fuck, <laughs> yo, fuck. But um, joke ended up being on me because she only had bikini pictures. And I'm just like, all right, I ain't gonna unsubscribe. I'm your only fan, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, I'm dating now, I'm dating now, it's going good. Um, I'm dating a girl I went to high school with. And it's kind of weird dating someone you went to high school with because like, I feel like as men, like we try to be macho around our woman. She like knows everything about me. She saw me get bullied. She saw me convert to skinny jeans. So it's like, <laughs> it's like no tough guy there at all, man. But, uh, but yeah, I did the whole thing. I'm basically doing a whole marry your best friend thing, that gay shit, man. But <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> giving real little spoon energy up here, man. I, <laughs> I love my girl. I love the death out of my girl, man. Uh, but yeah, what else I want to get into? Um, I wanted to touch on uh, stereotypes. I know the other black guy did. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna, we're not gonna do any audience participation this time, though. No. I'm just gonna say some of my pet peeves. Like one, one thing I hate, I hate eating chicken in front of white people. <laughs> I just imagine like, 
the eyes just beaming at me like, look, honey, I told you he likes it. Like, All right, you got me, you got me, man. But yeah. Another thing during this, uh, this, this uh, dry spell, I had a fantasy come up because I, I never dated outside my race before. It's not like I'm against it. I just never got around to it, I guess. And um, <laughs> I'm like, y'all do not believe me at all. <laughs> But yeah, so it was, I had this fantasy, like I, I just wanted to date a white woman and just like, while we're fucking, make her say Black Lives Matter. And I, <laughs> I feel like that would have been one for reparations, one good point for it, man. But yeah, um, what else? Uh, I bartend now at this uh, soul food restaurant downtown. And um, it's cool, it's basically like, it's, it's upscale soul food which is an oxymoron in itself already. Um, <laughs> so just imagine like having collard greens at Morton's pretty much, that's like how it is. Uh, but yeah, I, I bartend there, it's, it's pretty cool. But even then like the racism thing kind of like messes with me. Like the other day I'm at the bar um, doing my thing and it's, I learned that I just don't like really serving white people and more so white people before like that were born before like the 1960s because you know that's like pre-civil rights all that and um it was this older white lady she was so nice guys she was just like hey matthias can i have a jack and coke please but for some reason in my head i heard hey matthias can i have a jack and coke nigger and, <laughs> now if she would have asked for a negroni i would have really beat this bitch ass but <laughs> But what I did, I just cussed her out, man. I cussed her out, and the manager had to come from the back, and he was just like, hey, Matthias, man, it's cool, man. Just get to the back, bro. Just do the dishes for now. And I'm just like, what? The dishes? The concept created by the white man to keep the black man down? All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you.